The NFC Conference kind of sucks to be honest with you, and it's really hard to categorize the NFC because as a whole, each team is kind of going in their unique direction. But in today's video, I found a way to categorize every single team in the entire NFC Conference. I decided to go with four different categories because I feel like that was the best way to kind of go about things. So without further ado, let's start talking about the NFC Conference. And you might be wondering, Metro, what are these four categories you use to categorize the NFC Conference? And well, my lovely viewer, let me tell you. The four categories that I used is gonna be category number one, these are teams that are gonna be contenders for the next three to four years. Category number two, playoffs, and that's it. Category number three, meh, future. And category four, I don't even know where to start. I know these are very vague titles, but we'll explain them when we get to them. Let's start off by talking about the contenders for the next three to four years category. I feel like I don't really have to talk about this category that much. It's pretty self-explanatory. And currently as we sit, based off how I analyze each team's future, I can only come up with four teams that I think are legitimate contenders for the next three to four years. Those teams being the San Francisco 49ers, the Detroit Lions, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll start off by talking about the two NFC East teams because I think it's easier to talk about them first. Obviously, Philadelphia is going through a bit of a skid, but they still have a ton of talent. Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, some talent on the defense as well. They may not be Super Bowl winners anytime soon, but they're definitely going to be contenders at least for the next couple of seasons. As it goes for Dallas, you have a lot of your franchise corner stones the hardest thing for dallas moving forward is just gonna be paying those guys when you look up and down this roster you're gonna have to pay a ton of guys top money micah parsons deron bland cd lamb tyler smith tyler biotish not to mention dak prescott and mike mccarthy are going to be due for contract extensions pretty soon so if they can keep this core together i do think they're definitely in this category for many years to come probably even beyond three to four years but it's going to come down to paying these guys and executing at a high level in the playoffs consistently then there's detroit now i know detroit is probably not a contender necessarily this year but they definitely do have the talent to be contenders for the next couple of seasons. Whether you truly do believe in Jared Goff or not, they're going to be contenders for many years to come, and I think this team has a super bright future. And then there's San Francisco. Listen, San Francisco 49ers are probably going to win the Super Bowl this year. They are literally the Thanos of the NFL right now. They are literally the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant. They are literally the Justice League versus any villain out there. They have so many good players on this team, and the only way they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year, in my opinion, is unless they get injured or they just have a complete meltdown in the playoffs. So yeah, they're going to be contenders for many years to come. They're not going to have a hard time paying these guys because some of these guys are going to retire and they're going to figure it out because they're that good. But let's go ahead and move on to my next category. And this category is going to be the playoff and that's it category. These are going to be teams that I think are going to make the playoffs pretty consistently and have some success within the playoffs, but probably never take that next step to be legitimate contenders. Now, these are definitely subject to change, mainly on two different teams, but I think for the most part, they're going to be stuck in this category unless I'm proven otherwise. Again, there are four teams in this category and it is going to be the Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers, the Seattle Seahawks, and the Los Angeles Rams. Let's again talk about the two NFC North teams, the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. For Minnesota, it's going to be very difficult for this team to take the next step. Whether they do decide to keep Kirk Cousins or not, I just don't know if this team can take the next step to become legitimate contenders given how good the teams like Dallas, Philadelphia, Detroit, and San Francisco are. Could they potentially make a run if Kirk Cousins stays and this team maybe takes the next step defensively? Potentially. But I just don't know based off the talent that I've seen and based off the production I've seen if they can take that next step. Green Bay is interesting. If Jordan Love can take the next step to be a franchise quarterback like a Patrick Mahomes level guy, they can definitely turn into that next category. But unfortunately, I just don't know if this team has the talent as it sits right now to get to that next step. This was the hardest team to be honest with you to put into a category because I just did not feel like they really fit into any category right now. I even messed with the idea of actually putting them in the contenders for the next three to four years category, but that was just projecting Jordan Love to take the next step and be a very good quarterback. And I think as long as Jordan Love continues to progress and become better and better, they can get even closer and closer to be legitimate contenders. But I think right now I'm going to keep them in this playoff category. I know Packers fans are probably going to kill me in the comment section, but go ahead. I don't care. Then there's the Seattle Seahawks. Now the Seahawks are very interesting because coming into the season, I thought they were legitimate contenders, but as the season has worn on, I've just been more concerned and concerned for this team. The offensive line has seamlessly kind of taken a small step back and defensively speaking, the secondary is horrible. And I don't know why, because there's talent there. They have the pieces. Now they might lose some this off season with guys like Leonard Williams and Jordan Brooks off the books. But if they bring those guys back and they make a couple additions and make a couple changes to the coaching staff, I do think this team could potentially take the next step, but I just don't see them competing with teams like Dallas, Philadelphia, Detroit, or San Francisco. Will they make a run in the playoffs? Potentially, but I think getting to that championship game is very unlikely. And then lastly, there's the LA Rams. I think as long as 
as you have Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald, and all those guys, they're going to have a very bright future. Unfortunately for the LA Rams is they're kind of old now, and they don't really have the upside talent yet that can get to a championship level. I like Byron Young, I like Kobe Turner, I like Ernest Jones, I like Darian Kendrick, but I just don't know if they can take the next step right now, especially with the timeline of their best players. That is it for category number two. Let's go ahead and move on to category number three, and it is going to be the meh future category. These are teams that I think have either a meh to okay future, but I do think these are teams that could potentially move up one category to that playoff and that's it category if they take the proper steps to get there. This is my biggest category and there are currently five different teams on this list. The teams on this list are the Arizona Cardinals, the Chicago Bears, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Washington Commanders, and the Atlanta Falcons. We'll start off from the very back talking about the Atlanta Falcons first. I think this team is a quarterback and head coach away from getting to that real possibility. But with that being said, I just don't know if this team is going to be not stubborn enough to make those moves. Now that being said, if they go out there and fire Arthur Smith and get a legitimately good offensive minded head coach to go along with a superstar level quarterback, whether that's a guy like Caleb Williams, Drake May, or even Kirk Cousins, I don't care. I think this team can take that next step. I'll even take the next step and say that if they get a very good coach and a very good quarterback, they might even be in the contenders category because that's how highly I think of this team as a whole. But I just don't know if they're going to fire Arthur Smith and get rid of Desmond Ritter. So I would put them in that next category, but the fact that I think this team is going to be stubborn moving forward, I just don't know if I can do that. Next is the Washington Commanders. Now, I've already made a full-fledged video on the Washington Commanders. I'll probably have it pinned up at the very end, but if not, go ahead and check out my page. For the Commanders, it's pretty simple. I don't know if Sam Howell is the guy. I also don't know if the head coach is the guy. I think they're going to end up firing Ron Rivera, and who knows what's going to happen with Eric Bieniemy. You have questions on the defense. You have questions on the offense. The good news is, though, is that Sam Howell has shown promise. So I thought about putting them in my last category, but because they have Sam Howell and some decent offensive players to go along with a couple decent defensive players, I decided to put them in the meh future category. Next is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this is kind of a weird roster because they're a little bit older, but also have some young guys here and there. They already have a very good defense that is a bend but don't break style. And if they just get a very good quarterback, this team can be very good for many years to come. Problem is going to be this, though. It's going to be retaining those guys you already have to go along with finding an upgrade at quarterback. They're not going to have the draft capital to have a top 10 pick, and I just don't know if they have the cap space to go out there and get a Kirk Cousins level quarterback. Could they take a Bo Nix or Michael Penix if they somehow fall to you in the draft? 1000%. But will they? I don't know. They can make the playoffs. I just don't know if they're going to be consistently making the playoffs to make my second category. Next is the Chicago Bears. Similar to the other teams I've talked about in this list, I've already made a full-fledged video regarding the Chicago Bears. In fact, that is actually a pretty recent upload. In that video, we talked about whether they should take Caleb Williams or keep Justin Fields. I'm on the side of Caleb Williams, but based off the comments, it seems like a lot of people are on the side of keeping Justin Fields. I think depending on what they do with that decision, definitely could move them up or down. It seems like they're going to keep Justin Fields, and based off what the fans are saying, that's what it's looking like, so I want to keep them in the meh category because I'm not a big believer in Justin Fields. Then there's the Arizona Cardinals, and yet again, I've talked about the Arizona Cardinals in a little bit more detail in another video. This one was a video where I talked about the underrated futures of the NFL, and the Arizona Cardinals were a part of that, and I definitely do stand by that. I think they have the potential to be a pretty solid team moving forward, but that being said, it's going to take at least four years for this team to get to that point. They have Kyler Murray, and I do think he should be the future guy moving forward. I think with your draft picks you have in this year's draft, you have to address offensive line, defensive talent, maybe some weapons for Kyler to throw the ball to. I'm telling you right now, Marvin Harrison Jr., watch out. And lastly, we have our last category, which is going to be the I don't even know where to start category. And there's two teams on this list, and based off the process of elimination, it is going to be the New Orleans Saints and the New York Giants. Let's start off with the New Orleans Saints because they are in a bad fucking spot. They are extremely limited with their cap space. Sure, they could restructure some deals. Sure, they can cut some guys, but nonetheless, they don't really have the money to go out there and pick up a ton of guys. They have Derek car in the books for many years to come and he is just not the guy your big stars along the offense outside of chris Olave are getting to the point where they're going to be very old and fragile moving forward michael thomas and of course alvin kamara defensively you've reached your ceiling you're not going to get any better either offensively or defensively unless you fire your head coach and somehow get rid of Derek carr this team's limit of how far they can go is extremely limited can they make the playoffs yes 100 percent will they make the playoffs consistently though i have serious doubt and with where the roster is going i seriously doubt this team has a bright future moving forward i think they're going to be in the dumps for many years to come. And to be honest with you, that sucks because I think the NFL is a lot better when the Saints are better and that comes from a Raiders fan. But yeah, I don't even know where to start with that team. And then there's the New York Giants. And it all boils down to one man and one man only. Daniel Jones. You just had to fuck it up, didn't you? You just had to ruin the good thing the New York Giants had. They made the playoffs last year. They looked like they were into a bright and better pasture. And then 
Daniel Jones was horrible this year. They were supposed to take the next step and become championship contenders this year, but now they find themselves in the bottom of my categories. The good news is this, you have your draft picks, you can go out there and draft some stud guys to help the offensive line and help Daniel Jones progress. But when you're getting outplayed by Tommy DeVito and fans are clearly not on your side no more, that's a big problem. And have fun getting off of this guy's contract. It was a four year, I believe $160 million. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it is $160 million. Don't have a good offense. You don't have a good defense. There's questions in the coaching staff right now. You do have a little bit of cap space to work with, so I guess you can address some problems here and there. It is going to have to be some sort of crazy offseason turnaround for this team to get moved up from a different category. But for now, they're going to be in the I don't know where to start category. And that is going to conclude this video. If you guys do agree with my list and my categories, let me know in the comment section below. But if you think that your team was properly misplaced, then also let me know in the comment section below and we can have a nice little banter about it down there. But if you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button because that would help me out a ton. And I love you guys. Peace.